Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN, a mom to four, and today we're going through some of your myth first fact questions from the community tab about periods. There are tons of questions on that post. I could probably make a video every day for a year and not answer all of them. We're gonna do our best to get some of the most common questions answered today. If you're new here and you'd like to stick around, please hit that subscribe button. But if you don't like learning about periods, pregnancy, gynecology, et cetera, then definitely don't subscribe because I promise we'll leave here with interesting things to tell your friends. Yellow Brick Expat says, are period cravings real or imaginary? Is there a real reason why I want the world's supply of queso that week or am I just satisfying it in my imagination? And then Allison says, is the increased appetite that you have on your period all in your head or do you actually need extra calories? You don't actually need extra calories, at least not any significantly important amount during your cycle. However, that doesn't mean that cravings aren't real or are all in your head. I guess all thoughts are in your head, so wanting something is kind of in your head, but there's probably a physiologic reason why it happens. There have been tons of studies which validate this experience in people who have periods. It's a very common premenstrual symptom. In fact, most people have experienced this at some point. There is a physiologic reason, or at least a physiologic association with your period. It's probably a hormonal change that leads to these cravings. There's also some theories about the most common craving, which tends to be carbohydrates and why that is the most common craving. And some people think that it's because carbs increase serotonin levels in your brain a little bit, and that maybe your body is kind of trying to self-medicate if you're feeling a little down or fatigued or having a little bit of pain. Maybe your body tells you to eat carbs to increase your serotonin a little bit, and that's kind of a self-medication thing that your body does. It does happen, it is real, you do feel that way, but you don't need the extra calories, that's not the reason why. I'm also on the pill, and therefore I don't have real periods, so are the cravings especially imaginary? Oral contraceptive pills are typically a medication which reduces symptoms that people have before their periods, but that doesn't mean it universally eliminates them. At the end of the day, if you're feeling a symptom, then it's real even if it's not something that everybody experiences when they are about to start their period or that most people experience when they're on pills, you still can have some premenstrual symptoms when you're on oral contraceptive pills. Is it less common? Absolutely. Is it impossible? Definitely not. Hugs2003 says, periods should be five to seven days and anything shorter or longer is abnormal and unhealthy. The average length of menses is about five to seven days. However, that doesn't mean that less than five days is inherently abnormal. Some people have cycles that are as little as two to three days. If you're regularly bleeding for over seven days every time you have a period, that is probably not normal. It doesn't mean anything disastrous is going on. If you always have eight days of bleeding and it's not bothering you, it's probably fine. But if you're regularly having periods that are longer than seven days, that would be something to bring up with your doctor and at least let us look into it, make sure we don't see anything specifically going on, like a bleeding abnormality or something like that. Jessica says, the normal length of cycles and when to be concerned about irregular periods. My period has always been anywhere from 30 to 40 days. Sometimes I skip a month. I get crazy looks when I go to the clinic and they ask the first day of my last period. On average, people will have 25 to 35 days between cycles. And that's from cycle day one, which is the first day of bleeding, to the last day right before you have bleeding again. If you're having cycles that are 40 days apart sometimes, three months apart sometimes, 21 days apart sometimes, these are irregular and you definitely should let your doctor or advanced practice provider know. But if your periods have always been 35 days or 38 days apart since you started having periods and it's always within a couple days of that, it may just be your normal. I would always talk to your doctor if it's over 35 days or under 25 days, but there's still a chance that that falls within the realm of normal, especially if they are regular and not overly heavy or overly painful or anything like that. Now, skipping periods for months at a time is not normal and is always something that you should talk to your doctor or advanced practice provider about because you shouldn't be going months and months without periods. Unless you're on continuous birth Birth control and then it's safe to skip your period because of your birth control pills. We'll get into that in a minute. So Gen Z says, I heard don't swim in lakes, rivers, or seas on your period because blood can attract animals like sharks if they can smell you. And then Colleen says, don't go near a stallion while having your period because they can smell it and they'll try to mount you. These are things I hear repeated really often, especially the shark one, but there's never been any evidence that someone who is menstruating is more likely to be the victim of a shark attack. In general, shark attacks are incredibly rare. I've been studying up on 
done this while we've been living in Hawaii for the summer for me to work at a clinic here. I didn't just move to Hawaii. Aside from the fact that shark attacks are incredibly rare, there's also no reason to think that the small amounts of blood that might be near you would actually attract a shark. In fact, if you're using a menstrual cup or a tampon, you're likely losing less blood into the ocean than someone who just has like a little cut on their leg from a coral reef. So I wouldn't worry about this. I don't think it's a big deal. I probably wouldn't jump in the ocean myself if I was free bleeding, that would freak me out. But if you're using a menstrual cup or a tampon, there's no reason to think that you are more likely to be the victim of a shark attack. The stallion one is new to me. I've never heard this, but I did research it for y'all and it seems like this is something people are commonly told. There's actually a website, which I will link below if you wanna go read it, that goes through all of the reasons why this is not true and kind of comes to the conclusion that it doesn't make any sense. It was a whole thing. They discussed like the menstrual cycle of a mare compared to the menstrual cycle of a human. They went into great detail, but their conclusion of people who know way more about stallions than I do was this isn't true. There you go, not true either. <laughs> Nitty Spinny says, can you talk about how the lining of the uterus works when your periods are stopped if you're taking birth control? Too many other women have told me that the lining continues to grow if you don't have a period and that is not the case. So you're correct, that is not the case unless you're not on hormonal contraceptives or don't have another reason that you're not having periods. So in people who are breastfeeding, pregnant, on combined hormonal contraceptives, skipping their period by skipping the placebo pills and going straight into another pack, you're right, the lining doesn't continue to grow. If you're not cycling and you're just going months and months between periods, but you're not on hormonal birth, birth control, the lining can continue to grow and that can be problematic. That's why I always say here, if you're going months and months between periods, then you need to talk to your doctor advanced practice provider about that because it can be dangerous. That being said, on birth control pills, this doesn't happen. Why? Birth control pills have estrogen and progesterone in them. That means it mimics the second half of the cycle after ovulation. You don't ovulate on a birth control pill, but you have hormone levels that are similar to what we call the secretory phase or the second half of the menstrual cycle, which would be after ovulation. In that phase of the menstrual cycle, the secretory phase of the endometrium, the endometrium is at a steady state. It's not growing, it's being stable. And that would be the time, you know, if you had ovulated and got pregnant where the embryo was implanting. So stability is super important. When you stop your pills, the progesterone drops drastically, you have a cycle. Now, there is a little bit of growth because you do still have estrogen and that's what prompts the lining of the uterus to grow, which is why if you're on combined hormonal contraceptives and you're skipping the placebo pills and going straight into a new pack, eventually at some point you will start having weird bleeding and you will need to stop for a few days and have a period. But in general, you're not going to see someone who gets the lining of the uterus growing and growing and growing and gets overgrown and causes a problem because the progesterone combats the estrogen from being able to cause that to happen. Hope that makes sense. Leah says, why are periods blood? Like why is that how the lining of the uterus is discharged? Is the lining just very vascular? So the lining of the uterus or the endometrium, which is what we call it, is very vascular. That's where an embryo implants. And so there has to be lots of blood supply there for an embryo to implant and start growing because it needs that blood flow around it to help it grow and a place for the placenta to start to form. So yes, it is highly vascular. When you have a menstrual cycle, you do have blood that comes out, but you also have the lining of the uterus, which is called endometrial tissue. When that comes out, those vessels where it was attached, they have to clot off and that takes a little bit of time and you have some bleeding from that as well. So it's just a mixture of the physiology of how the uterine lining grows and sheds and the fact that, as you said, it is highly vascular for an important reason. Melissa says, tampons might make cramps worse and your period stops when you're in the water. Let's take the tampon one first. I think this is a very individual thing. There's no scientific data that says tampons make cramps better or worse. And anecdotally, my patients have told me both. Some people feel like their cramps are worse when using tampons and got better when they switched to a menstrual cup or went back to using pads. Some people felt like their cramps are better when they're using a tampon as opposed to pads or menstrual cups. At the end of the day, this is very individual and whatever makes you feel better is what you should do. I don't think there's a universal answer to that question. Maybe someday we'll have science that proves me wrong. And then Melissa also says, your period kind of stops when you're in the water. So the pressure of being submerged in the water does somewhat prevent period blood from exiting the vagina to the outside world. However, it doesn't slow your period down or make your period stop. You still will have bleeding from the uterus through the cervix into the vagina. And eventually, if you're in the water long enough, that will build up 
enough pressure to combat the pressure of the water and you'll have bleeding. So it's not that it changes your period or what's going on with your period. It just makes the period blood kind of gather in the vaginal vault or vaginal canal instead of just immediately coming out. And then eventually it will come out. Carly says, is it true that cramping is the uterus's way of squeezing out blood? Kind of. Cramps are mediated by hormones, but they aren't required to get the blood out. Some people don't have cramps at all and they still have periods just fine. And some people have cramps with their periods. It is true that a cramp is like a mini uterine contraction and that does help dispel the blood and also helps close off those vessels we were talking about earlier so they can stop bleeding. However, they're not integral to having periods. You can have periods without pain, without cramping, or you can have some mild cramping and that can still be normal. You can also get pain or cramping from blood or blood clots moving through the cervix and into the vagina. I have another video because I know after that comment, people are going to ask about blood clots. So if you want to go watch my top five period questions video that I filmed a very long time ago, I will link that in the description box below. I do talk about period poops and clots and all kinds of things in that video as well. Mary says, I've heard people say that taking birth control is quote unquote, saving your eggs. I don't think that's true. Are there cases where birth control can help preserve fertility. Unfortunately, this isn't true. We wanted it to be true and it seems like it should be true, but we've studied this a lot and people who are on birth control lose eggs in the ovary, even though they're not ovulating them at the same rate as people who are not on oral contraceptive pills. This is through a process called apoptosis where the eggs age and go away regardless of if you are having an ovulation each month. It would be great if that worked like that, but unfortunately it doesn't. And Chanda says, the cycles of women in the same household will eventually synchronize. I talked about this in the myths video and unfortunately the answer might break some hearts. I know it made me sad, I'm still recovering from it. If you wanna go watch that video, I will link it in the eye or in the description box below. You can go watch that now. I hope you learned something today. If you did, leave a like on this video that helps it get out to more people. And as I said in the last video, I am biased, but I think it is good information. If you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, we'd love to have you. I will see you next Monday.